In this episode of the UX Tea Break, I ask you a question, which is, are you a positivist or an interpretivist user researcher? So this question came about from an Instagram post I made this week, which was taken when I was running a training course in London. Um, the training course I was running was aimed at senior user researchers, and the purpose of it is to improve their impact as user researchers. One of the workshop activities we do on the training course is ask this particular question, whether or not you're a positivist or an interpretivist. And a few people, when they saw the post on Instagram, asked if I would make that publicly available. So I've done that. If you look in the discussion below, you'll find the questions. And if that's all you're interested in, you can stop watching the video now and you can take the quiz. If you want to find out a bit more detail behind it, that's what I wanted to turn to now. Now, that workshop itself is based on a pretty famous diagram in the field of user research. That diagram I'll put on screen now is by um, Christian Rohrer. And Christian um, Rohrer uh, classified the various types of user research method on a couple of dimensions. One dimension is whether the research method is quantitative or qualitative. In other words, whether it tells us uh, what's happening or it tells us why something's happening. And the other dimension is whether it measures user behavior or whether it measures users' attitudes. And as you can see, you end up with research methods in different quadrants. Now, on the course, what we do is we recreate that diagram. But it's more than that, because one thing I get people to examine is their own epistemological biases. Uh, what I mean by that is that some of us, depending on our education or our training, um, the kind of life experiences, um, we, have a diff we have a particular perspective about the way knowledge should be accumulated in the world. So, for example, my own background, I, I did a psychology BSc, and as a consequence, uh, the training that I had was quite positivist in outlook. In other words, the focus was very much on running experiments testing hypotheses and trying to uncover laws of human behavior. Now that positivist approach comes from the tradition of physics and chemistry, where it's obviously got a fantastic history and it works well there. The problem is when it's applied to human behavior, sometimes it's not quite as neat as that. People don't often behave the way you might expect them to. That's not to say there aren't laws in psychology. Hicks law um, and Fitz law will be a couple of laws that are relevant to people that work in the field of uh, UX design. But the point is that often behavior depends on context. So the same person may behave in a different way if the context is different, or two similar people may behave in different ways in the same context for, for, for reasons that are due to other artifacts. In other words, there's no single truth in the world when we're looking at human behavior. That's another extreme, and that extreme is interpretivism. Now, depending on where you sit on that scale, is going to determine what kind of research methods you prefer to carry out. If you're a um, positivist in Outlook, then you're more likely to focus on things like A-B testing, summative usability testing, uh, first-click metrics, things that provide numbers and measure how people behave in a particular situation because you believe there's a kind of a fundamental truth there to be uncovered. If you're more interpretivist in Outlook, you'll be looking at things like contextual inquiry, uh, ethnography, field visits, things where you're able to see different people's perspectives and understand their different stories and the way things go together. Now, in my experience, the best user researchers tend to use mixed methods. Um, in other words, they use some, some of the methods that you might think of as positivist in Outlook, and some use the methods that you might think of as interpretivist in Outlook. If you're a mixed methods person, you'll discover that when you do the quiz below, because you'll have a properly an even mix of both left and right answers. In that case, you're probably a post-positivist. Uh, now, another reason for considering your own epistemological outlook is it may be different from your teams. Your team may have a view that all research that's done should be positivist because of their own background. If that's the case, and you're trying to convince them with research that comes from the interpretivist tradition, it's going to be harder for you to persuade them and bring them over to your side. So you may want to combine some of the interpretivist research you do with also the kind of methods that might persuade them that you're on the right track so that your research has got meaning to them. Well, I hope you found that useful. If you did, and if I'd be interested in your answers to the quiz, 
um, please uh, post them below. And if you have any questions you'd like me to answer in future tea break videos, please post them uh, below as well. Mm -hmm.